today, for those of you who don't know, this happened. Behold what occurred. Good night, Posadas John. Security. Security! God! Gods! Someone fetch the gods! Anyway, sorry, British people. Um, so yeah, uh, 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 this is a picture of, uh, of Van Gogh uh, that is in a museum in England. And somebody walked up to it and they splashed tomato juice on it or tomato soup. Now, this has sparked a uh, media frenzy. This tweet alone, let's just take a look real quick. This tweet alone got 39,000 quote tweets, 88.4, sorry, 8.4 thousand retweets and over 30,000 likes. So, you know, a lot of people talking about this right now. Now, what you saw them doing afterwards, by the way, was them glue, was put them putting super glue on their hands and gluing themselves their hands to the wall, which, you know, is a way of it's a protest technique. It makes it so that uh, uh you sit there for longer and people have to see it for longer and it buys time so that the media can arrive and etc. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about uh, with regard to this circumstance. People have had a lot of opinions. The first thing, let me just be clear. Let's just get the facts straight. Uh, the only damage that was really done at all uh, to the piece was only to the frame. Uh, and it's even questionable if that did any damage at all. These paintings are sealed in a, a, a like a glaze. They have a, a protective glaze that's placed over them when they're on display. So the soup actually, you can actually see if you look closely in the video here, you can actually see if you look really closely that the, the soup isn't actually on the painting. It's like sliding off the painting. That's because there is a protective layer here that is between the the picture and the soup, okay? It's just sort of sliding off. So just so that we know that no actual art was truly harmed um, here. I'm not very mad about it anymore then. Yeah, it's it's like, a, you know, it's, it's not a, they didn't actually damage it. But let's pretend that they had, my lovely imps, let us pretend that they had damaged it. Let us pretend that they had damaged it permanently. That makes the conversation much more interesting, doesn't it? Um, so, first of all, before we go any further, let's just, let's pretend, first of all, we're gonna pretend that they su succeeded, but we're also gonna look at the group that did this. This is the group that, that pulled this stunt. Uh, it's called Just Stop Oil, demanding the UK government agrees to end all new oil and gas contracts. Support us here, JustStopOil.org. You know, they're a pretty large account. Uh, they have been apparently up to a lot of different actions, and this is just one of them. For example, here is another one where this one is, I think we can all agree, very, very funny and very, very uh, giga chad they sprayed paint all over the police station, uh, all over the ground and the sign. They, they sprayed cheese looking paint all over this Scotland Yard, which is actually, the more, Scotland Yard isn't a police station, it's more like the feds. But anyway, uh, you know, they're, they're spraying it all over the place. This was also done by the same organization, Just Stop Oil. Just Stop Oil has actually been doing a number of 
uh, of, of climate-focused protests, publicity stunts, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, they've been doing quite a lot of things. And as you can see here, here's them claiming credit for it um, and whatever. Uh, the only problem here is the target of the vandalism. Well, that's the interesting thing. So there's a lot of things that we could talk about in this. There's a whole conversation we could have around vandalism and around iconoclasm. Um, iconoclasm being the destruction of religious, historical uh, uh, icons. Basically, you know, destroying a, a cross or destroying a church or destroying a uh, piece of art that's very religiously or culturally relevant. Um, and uh, that's a that's a, a iconoclasm has occurred all throughout history for many different reasons. Uh, it has been done. We actually talked about earlier this year. We talked about an odd example of iconoclasm when in uh, when the Georgia stones the the Georgia. Um, there was a, I think it was the Georgia, yeah, the Georgia Guidestones, which was a small art, a, a small but striking art installation, was bombed, presumably by uh, some sort of, uh, you know, anti-pagan group. I don't really know why. Um, the American Stonehenge was blown up earlier this year, and we talked about it, and I talked about some of the issues with it and some of the problems I had with it. Um, and some of you will know that I've been very, very supportive of certain acts of, of iconoclasm in the past. For example, I quite like, uh, I, I, I find quite striking the destruction of Confederate monuments. Um, but iconoclasm is simply a tactic. Vandalism is simply a tactic. So it has to be analyzed for what it accomplishes. Now, there's a lot of different things we could talk about with regard to this. Uh, a lot of people were very, very angry immediately, um, you know, uh, 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 by what happened today, by the spilling of tomato soup on a Van Gogh original. Um, and I can actually kind of understand where they're coming from, right? So if, if we're looking at a, a painting, and this painting is is a is a uh, you know an a, an old historical painting by a famous artist who is loved and cherished uh, a very interesting character um, Van Gogh had a lot of um, was a very troubled individual but also produced some of the most iconic pieces of art that that uh, that any person in, in modern culture recognizes and a lot of people have emotional attachments not just to the work of Van Gogh but to the history around Van Gogh. Um, and uh, so it makes sense to me why a lot of people would be angry. Uh, like, hell, I would be pretty angry if, like, an artist, if something that I loved, like, I don't know. I, 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 the thing, the example, the funny example I was thinking about is um, you all know I'm, like, a super fan of this one game called Pathologic 2, best game ever made, uh, genuinely a work of, of video gaming art. And if, if, if somebody made a, a, a pathologic two art exhibit, and somebody threw shit on it. It would, uh, it would, it would, it would make me a little sad. You know, it would make me feel bad. I would be like, damn, why would you destroy that? And generally, I, uh, generally, I do feel pretty sad about the destruction of most types of art. Uh, a lot of art. I think it's it's pretty unfortunate to have it be destroyed. However. With that all kept in mind and with, you know, paying attention to the fact that a lot of people probably have some attachment to this particular painting, in addition to the history of Van Gogh in general, I think it's also important to take a look at, um, at the flip side. So, some of you may know that we live in a society that is very obsessed with spectacle. After all, you're watching a stream right now, and streamers are indeed a part of the spectacle. The spectacle is the 24-hour entertainment culture. It's the idea that there's you can always turn on the TV and there's an exciting new product being sold to you. There's an exciting new piece of media. It's what we were just talking about in the last section. If you're watching this 
on YouTube as a video, you can go to my VODs playlist and you can check out the full VOD and catch the long conversation we had just before this segment that's super interesting. You should do that. Also, you should like and subscribe. It's really easy and you won't miss any of my videos and they're really amazing. So press like and press subscribe. However, um, as we were just talking about before, uh, our society in its current form is very obsessed with media, AKA, you know, video games, TV shows, music, and, uh, and uh, consumption. You watch TV, you get served ads, you go and you buy the products related to the media you enjoy, you play the Halo 3, you buy the Halo 3 controller, you buy the Halo 3 backpack, you, you, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, uh, I was talking about how our society is very obsessed with the idea of, or, or, or a lot of our society is, is sort of digested and processed through the idea of spectacle. Big things happening on TV, big things happening in the past on the radio, big things happening on the internet that everybody plugs into and watches. It's, the spectacle refers to a society that is processed through images, videos, images, uh, 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 movies, advertisements. And that is what the, the backbone of all this is, is that all this stuff serves as advertisements so that we'll go spend our money on products. Now, um, we were just talking about all of the issues with this type of a, of a society, but nonetheless, that is how it is. And uh, believe it or not, what we've witnessed today with the tomato soup being splashed on the Van Gogh painting is a successful hijacking of the spectacle. Um, it, it was a successful hijacking of the spectacle. Uh, in the conversations uh, around this, uh, uh, I, I saw many people who were, at, who were sort of defending the, the, the tomato souping of the Van Gogh. Um, I saw many people talking about, uh, specifically fixating on the fact that, hey, a guy very recently um, self-immolated. Let me see if I can get the guy's name. Hold on a second. Um, this happened earlier this year. Um, a In an Earth Day protest, a guy, a 50-year-old man named Wynne Bruce, set himself on fire on the steps of the Supreme Court. That happened in April of this year. A guy self-immolated in the name of bringing attention on Earth Day, on the steps of the Supreme Court, and basically no one heard about it. That was a few months ago. A guy burned himself alive on the front steps of the Supreme Court, and nobody fucking talked about it. Um, there are environmentalist activists right now at literal physical war um, with oil companies who are... Uh, aggressing on their land in violation of the law. The oil company is violating treaties in, 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 uh, in, in countries like Brazil and in countries most known of, some of you will know, in Canada. Uh, that, that this is a regular occurrence, that an oil company will just violate a treaty and then they tie it up in legalese and because they're violating the treaties of generally poor tribal people who uh, have been, you know, made, have come to peace with whatever government that oversees them, um, they're able to get away with it because they'll break the law and then they'll deal with the lawsuits and they have a million lawyers and the people who now live on poisoned land or poisoned water supplies, even worse, just have to deal with it. And that never gets any vis visibility in the news. You never, you barely ever hear about that on your Twitter timelines. But you are, interestingly, hearing about tomato soup that didn't damage a Van Gogh painting. Now, I am not, uh, uh, what, what was it called? The Situationists, I believe, is the, is the faction that sort of believed that the key to, uh, to changing the world was to hijack spectacle by creating, um, by creating situations by by doing publicity stunts or performance uh performances that brought attention to specific issues i'm not that type 
Um, and part of the reason is because of exactly what we saw here today. Doe and I were talking about this this morning, and I have to give credit to Doe for explaining it this way. So credit to Doe here for this one. But ha if you'll notice, um, this is no longer a climate protest. It's a discourse. And that tends to happen all the time with stunts like this. It becomes a, uh, a, 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 a triviality. It becomes something funny and enraging and r something react worthy that you just, I had my hot take on it and then it disappears. People go back and forth maybe. No, nobody ever really actually moves forward from their position. It just gets put on as a, as a piece of art, an event that is then digested and, and, and treated as like, wow, remember when that weird thing happened? And of course, uh, it did get the attention of the media, but to what end? The media just treated it as a strange occurrence, a odd uh, situation of people acting out, a performance art. It's been rehabilitated. It's been uh, 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 captured and used to just generate clicks. Now all of the news stations will talk about it and they'll make their money off of it. Now I'm talking about it. All, and you're talking about it all in the timeline. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because hopefully I'd like to teach, I'd like to talk, uh, expand on the conversation and actually move it in a, pro in a profitable, or not a profitable, although that's nice too if you guys want to donate, but in a uh, productive direction is what I meant to say. Um, which is to say, uh, I, I want people to think about it. I want people to think about what these things do and whether they actually accomplish what they're setting out to do. Um... I think the problem is that people don't look at a painting getting splattered with tomato soup and think this is a representation of how oil companies are ruining the planet. That's not what that that's not what they're trying to do anyway. Um uh they they're just trying to get people to listen at all. The the this I don't as far as I know, the Van Gogh piece and the tomato soup doesn't isn't meant to be in and of itself symbolic. It is simply supposed to be an act of shocking behavior that brings people's attention so that a deeper message can be conveyed. Uh, it is an act of essentially desperation. And that's where I have to say that there's, um, I, I have some sympathies because I think that a lot of people feel like, uh, despite the fact that we live in a society where anybody can put out a YouTube video or anybody can post um, on, uh, 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 or anybody can, can post on social media that even though everybody has a voice, nobody has a say in anything. Um, and so sometimes in, out of the pure hope, out of a, 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 out of the pure hope that something can be, some message can be conveyed. I think people sometimes choose to, uh, do something shocking. And there's another thing I want to say. Um, how many people knew they were activists? Well, they were wearing shirts that said the group that they're a part of. And in the video, in the full video, if you listen to it, uh, they end up, once the, once the cameras show up, they give their spiel. They like say what they were trying to do, what they were like trying to communicate. Um, but there's another aspect that I want you to consider, okay? And this is the one that's most important to me. This is where my bias is gonna come in. This is the thing I care about the most, which is Van us having a Van Gogh piece in a museum is in and of itself a luxury, like an unbelievable luxury. And when I say it's an unbelievable luxury, I mean, guys, for the last like month, there have, there have been unprecedented floods across S across Central and Southern Asia. Like, enough that like millions upon millions of people have been displaced. And these are floods that are definitively caused by, out, by, uh, by, by global warming. Glaciers melting, ice melting more than it ever has in the past, leading to outrageous floods that decimate entire areas of the world all across the world right now 
There are a number of definitive climate crises that are driving people from their homes and that are killing thousands upon thousands of people. Those are lives that are snuffed out. It's not just human lives, though that is by far the most important part of all. It is human lives, animal lives, cultures, local cultures, living spaces, environments, uh, histories, all being erased. And on top of that, the people who are dying, people who are being displaced, people who are forced into unbearable poverty, they don't get to make anything anymore. They don't get to go create art. You don't know, but all of these living, breathing uh, humans no longer have a, a, a life in which they can contribute to the people around them, to contribute to you. How many Van Goghs were, have been erased in the last month of flooding across Asia, which is definitively almost almost one to one caused by global warming and global warming we know is man made. We know it's caused by industrial and agricultural outputs that largely benefit the first the first world, the global north. We have like the Van Gogh piece that exists is special because it's a piece of the past. It's a it's a beautiful piece of art created by somebody. But did you know do you guys recognize that there are thousands, there are literally uncountable numbers of pieces of art that disappear forever because they were lost forever, because somebody's basement flooded because your grandpa passed away and he had a painting in his attic and there was an electrical fire or a thunderstorm and the, the attic burned and you lost a piece of art that could be as amazing, if not more amazing, than anything that Van Gogh ever created. The fact that we have a Van Gogh at all is a luxury. And yes, these people splashing tomato sauce on a piece of history uh, is, is certainly shocking, but can you really get all that mad about it when we acknowledge that every single day we don't even think about the fact that we've lost countless other arts? I mean, guys, when when have you guys seen some of the, the flooding here? Let me just show a picture real quick here. Let's just take, can we just get a picture real quick of some of these floods? Like, I mean, look at this. Here we go. This is from this year, by the way, okay? This is, this is flooding in Pakistan, okay? See this? All of these houses, all of these families underwater. How many pieces of art? How many aspiring artists? How many aspiring inventors? How many aspiring doctors? How many aspiring loving people, nurses, were in these houses? How many of them died? How many of their things were washed around forever? And yet, one can of soup can get the entire internet a Twitter, literally, about a, a, a piece of art that wasn't even damaged. It kind of does speak to how fucked up our entire way of looking at the world is. I just wish that half of what you conveyed would get conveyed to normies or people in power. Well, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Like, It's up to us how we decide to talk about it, right? It's up to us. Now, somebody just before the YouTube hiccup had said, is this harnessable? I don't know if it is. I don't know if it's harnessable, but I can't really get all that mad at these activists for trying and failing, you know? Um, I, 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 I can't really get all that mad at them even if they didn't do it right, even if they picked kind of a silly target. I would, I would, well, hold on nuts, pick a different target for your shock activism, that's all I ask, but we've seen them pick other targets. And when they pick other targets, there are mechanisms in place that suppress that information. Um, here's an example, by the way. Um, there are some examples in recent memory of better targets, and I generally do agree that a Van Gogh is not the best target for this sort of thing. Um, uh, but, but, uh, you guys remember, you guys remember when the, uh, when in Minneapolis they burnt down the, 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 
the police station. You guys remember that when that happened in 2020 during the BLM uprisings, when they set that police department on fire, the police department that was responsible for overseeing so many deaths and so much over policing. That's an act of iconoclasm that really, that I think really echoed. But even that, even that hasn't necessarily succeeded to get the attention. It got recuperated immediately. When Fox News talked about it, they were able to just take those images and use them to fear monger. When CNN took them, they took those images and used them mostly to fear monger. It was a couple of like small lefties who were basically saying, uh, and you know, and a lot of people saw that. And even though the media was 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 saying like was using it to fear monger, a lot of people saw it as a point of solidarity, a very definitive stand against the police. But this is the problem with always engaging in a battle of optics. This is the the problem with trying to engage on the terms of a spectacle that is controlled by corporate interests, and it is controlled by corporate interests. Notice that like we can't even we can't even have a philosophical discussion about the like about the lines for political violence because that is considered not like okay to you, you can't broadcast that anywhere even when you're not advocating for anything even conversations about that that's everything that we do and talk about is on the terms of the spectacle everything that we do is subject to this this up and down battle around optics and they can recuperate it and turn it into a click piece for the day it's sad and it I don't know, it, it is a little doomer, you know? But at least for me, when I see something like this, what I see is a, a failed attempt to make a statement or, or a pseudo failed attempt to make a statement. But I still want to listen and hear what they're trying to say. Because even though I don't think that splashing tomato soup on a Van Gogh is the most, ex most valuable way to express yourself, we're talking about it, aren't we? We're talking about it right now. So if we're talking about it and we have to talk about it because it's, been, it's put in our face and it was put in our face because they did manage to gather the attention. Notice that like, like I said, a guy set himself on fire earlier this year and basically nobody here knew about it. That happened on the steps of the Supreme Court and basically nobody knew about it. I barely, I, don't, I, I feel like I probably mentioned it on stream back in April, but I didn't make a segment on it because I had barely heard about it. That's how these platforms work. And there is a mutual shared interest. Uh, shocking and painful truths are not easily monetizable. Um, hard conversations are not easily uh, monetizable. Uh, corporations don't give a shit. And it's hard. Maybe if we talk more about climate change, you have we, we wouldn't have to keep seeing artworks being vandalized. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, you know? What why do you guys think I talk about this this doomer shit all the time? You know? I tell you, I I don't I don't I always try to have bloomer, you know, bloomer streams where we end talking about ways to survive and ways to persist and ways to fight back against this. But everybody here knows, including myself, that it gets exhausting to talk about these harsh things. And that is taken advantage of. Our, our desire to escape is taken advantage of. And our society has become one of perpetual escape, where we always are fleeing into entertainment and purchasing and consumptivism, as opposed to grappling with the, the uncomfortable realities of our existence. Do, do leftists need to do daily doomer segments on climate change? No, I think we need to. I I I think we need to keep stepping up the game. I don't know if it's about doing daily doomer segments. I just don't. I think this. You guys want the harsh truth? I don't. I don't think I can. I don't think streamers can do it. I don't think it's us. All that we can do, we are one piece 
we can get people thinking. We can prompt certain things, but at the end of the day, we are at the complete and utter mercy of the spectacle. Okay? It's not just normies. It's 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 that I'm an entertainer at the end of the day. I'm on YouTube. YouTube doesn't let us talk about a lot of things. YouTube isn't the place to talk about a lot of things. YouTube isn't the place uh and they know that. And I try. I push I push uh I I push my audience to think about things as deeply as possible. I encourage and you know you guys know I do this. You guys know I try to tackle hard issues all the time on here. But I know that it's not profitable the most profitable thing. I know that me talking about um hard issues doesn't get me 4000 viewers where if i was doing gambling streams or whatever and and just could could do that with my life i would probably be very you know i'd probably be making a lot more money and shit i know i would be i know i'd be getting into the algorithm more i know my shit you guys know you guys i've i've talked about this all my videos getting demonetized all the time it's terrible and it makes it really, really hard for me to grow my channel. But we're doing so, you know, I'm doing so out of like, you know, pure force of will. But you also have to remember that like, every streamer worth their salt is constantly trying to tell you that you have to act. I'm acting in the way that I can, which is, I research things, I think about them, I host forums for discussion, I host a community that people can talk and engage and connect with one another and help one another, I sometimes participate in fundraisers, I sometimes participate in direct political action, but there's only so much I can do. I'm just a gaming, I'm just a gamer on the internet, you know? So, you know. I loved hearing about hackerspaces in here last week. Well, I want to do more stuff like that. That's something that in the long term, you know, if I can get my show running for five years, I hope we can, I hope I can use whatever success I have to build community things, to build uh, 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 a web websites and things like that that let people share information, that let people build things together. That's what I want to do. That's what I, I want... The, I want to have an actual impact on the world. And uh, if I can be honest for a minute, I, I've been a little depressed lately. I'm sure it probably shows a little bit sometimes on stream, though I, I'm sure, you know, I don't know. Usually when I'm on stream, I, I it puts it out of mind. But I, I've, been, I've been a little depressed lately because a lot of times it feels like all of the effort and thought that I put into things that I can't do anything because I'm just a fucking YouTuber. And it's true. I can't really do anything because I'm just a fucking YouTuber. I am an internet clown. And I wish I was, I wish I could be more than that. I wish any of us could be more than that. Even the best of the YouTubers are still internet clowns at the end of the day. And it's not us. Like, unlike Elon Musk, I don't think I'm going to save the world. And I'm not trying to save the world but I would like to help make it a better place. I would. It's just really hard to do so. You can do more than the average person by a long shot? I know I have. I know I can, and I have. But, like, it's a drop in the bucket, you know? Like, we just talked about earlier in the stream how, um, how Elon Musk can just literally get mad on Twitter, and then 10 minutes later, he can... He can he can cause an, a nightmare for the entire nation of Ukraine. I can't do anything like that. I might be able to raise a couple thousand dollars. I mean, you guys know, I, ra I helped raise $20,000 that all went into, like, trans GoFundMes at, at, at the, uh, the very tail end of last year. You guys remember that. I know you guys know. I know you guys remember the shit that I do. But it's so small in comparison to the people who wield unbelievable power. And yet we have to contend with them.